Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal tutorial. So in this video we're going to pick up from where we were previously. We've implemented our time-based gaze functionality to the interactive objects and what we're going to do now is build upon this and we're going to create a widget to act as a timer. And because we're using VR the easiest way to get this positioned in the world uh, rather than using the standard offsets is to use something called a 3D widget. So to get started, uh, we're going to need a standard widget anyway. So if we go in to our Blueprints folder, we'll right click and create a new user interface widget blueprint. We can call this one WBP underscore timer. And in here, we we'll just go in and start setting up the visual for the timer. So the only thing we really need here is going to be a progress bar. I'll rename that to timer bar. And I'm just going to make sure that this is in the center. We will give this the alignment of 0.5.5 and the position of zero, zero. So it's directly in the center. Now for the visual side of this, I'm just gonna make it a little bit longer. So 200 units and maybe a little bit thinner at 20. So it just looks like a nice sleek uh, timer. We don't want this to be taking up too much screen space. Now the final thing is if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I hate this uh, gradient thing that comes as default. So we're gonna make this look a little bit more modern and a little bit less like the Vista UI. So for the style, what I'm gonna do is go back to the background image and I'm gonna select an image here. So what we're gonna do is we'll go to the view options and I want to access the engine content and inside of the search bar, we'll just search for the square box or yeah, white square texture is what we want. So this is gonna be a nice minimalistic and clean looking UI. And I want the same thing for the fill image. So we can actually just right click on the background. We can copy this and we can paste this into the fill image. So that just means now that when we start filling this, we're gonna have this blue color as our fill color and that's perfectly fine. And the bar will fill and look like so. And I just think that looks a little bit sleeker and a little bit nicer. So that's what we're gonna be using. And I've included that just in case you've watched the demonstration where I showed a few videos ago what we're gonna make and you wanted to replicate the style a little bit or something, then this is the way that I've set up the, uh, the images as well. And the final thing is we want to set the functionality for this. So we can do this straight away. So this is uh, ready to go and put straight into the level. So what we want to do is get our progress bar and we're gonna bind this to a new function. We'll rename this to timer percent. And this is where the logic will be held for actually filling the bar. Now, before we can do that, we need a reference to the current player in the level. So we're gonna go back to the event graph. We can get rid of these and we just keep the event construct. And all we want to do is we're going to do a cast to the player base or the BP underscore player base. We want to get the player pawn, so the current player pawn, and we're going to promote this to a variable to use later. And we'll just call this our player reference. Okay, so that's all we needed to do here. That was our reference to the player that we're going to need. Back in the timer percent function, what we want to do here is we need to clamp the value that's getting returned to a value between zero and one. And I'll just explain why that is in the moment as well. So the zero and one comes from our percent bar. If you've, again, just in case you've not used this before, uh, you'll see that when we scrub through the percentage bar, it starts at zero and the maximum fill point is at one. So this is going on a base of zero to one as minimum and maximum. So that's what we're gonna do here is clamp this just to make sure we don't go over the maximum. And the values that we're interested in, we're gonna get our player ref. We will find the focus timer. So remember we made this in the previous video, the focus timer, and we stored a reference to this. We'll get the focus timer there. And we also want to get the timer length. So this again is the variable that we've made, which is why we expose this so that we could quickly change and update how long the timer lasts, but it also means that we can access it in another class. So just in case you skipped that previously, thinking that you wouldn't need it, remember that we came in and we've promoted our set timer by function name. Uh, we've promoted the time to a variable, which is what we need to use here. So with those two, all we want to do is we're gonna pull off of here. We want to get the time elapsed. So get time elapsed. And we want that to be a time by handle. So get time elapsed, time by handle. We will pull this back a little bit. We're gonna pull off of this and we want to divide a float by a float. And that's gonna be divided by the timer length just so that we get the correct value each time, uh, regardless of what we've set this to. And then we can plug that into the value. So that's gonna clamp that between zero and one so as the timer is being updated, this is gonna come in and this will act as the variable that's gonna be passed into the binding for the percent of the bar. So that's really nice and simple, and that's pretty much all we need for our timer to work. Now to display this in the world, we're going to create a, another blueprint. So we're gonna to go to blueprint class. This can be just a standard actor. 
and I'll call this the BP underscore timer. And inside of this, I want the 3D widget. So if we just type widgets, we can get the widget option here. Call this a timer again, and we can actually just replace this with the default scene route. Now, the important thing here is uh, the reason we've just made the blueprint, uh, the widget blueprint first, is we want to come down and find the option for the widget to use here. And I always forget where this is. It's kind of hidden. Okay, it's just here. So the widget class. We want to plug in our WBP underscore timer, and we can see that just over here, the timer that we've just created, the progress bar, is selected. Now, the other thing I find useful to do here is to set up the initial rotation of the object, because at the moment, when you spawn this in, it's just going to spawn at 0, 0, 0, or however you create and spawn in the actor. Uh, because we've got quite a static VR thing going on where you're always pretty much uh, in place at the moment, I find that we can do this just once and it works quite well. So in the event graph, all I want to do is come in and set the actor rotation on the begin play. So set actor rotation. And all I want this to be is we're going to get the current actor location. So the location that the widget is at. We're going to find the look at rotation and the target rotation is going to be the player pawn. So we'll get player pawn again. And then from this, we want to pull out the get actor location. So we're basically just saying find where we are and from here, look at the location of the player. And we can plug that into our set actor rotation, compile that. And that just means that when this is spawned, it will always look at the player. Now, if you've got something already where you're moving around, you have controls or more teleportation, and this is still going to be useful, then you can always just plug this directly into the event graph. And it just means that you'll have one of those widgets, which kind of follow the player as you move around. But the way that I looked at it is because we're not really moving and because this is based on your view or your gaze looking at something for a certain amount of time. And as soon as you stop looking, the widget's going to go away anyway. I didn't, really, I didn't think that would be overly useful, but the same logic can be used as I said on the event tick. And that really leaves one thing. So we're going to go back to our player base class and we now need to start spawning the timer and making sure that it gets reset if we're not using it. So I'm going to remove these. And what we want to do first of all is spawn the actor itself. So we'll spawn actor from class. And the actor that we want to spawn obviously is going to be our timer. So we'll get the BP timer. We can split the structure pin so that we can just access the, uh, the location that we're going to spawn this new actor. And we also want to promote this to a variable because we're going to be tracking this in a moment. So we'll promote to variable and we'll call this one the timer ref. Okay, so we have a reference to our timer. Now the reason we've done that is because like we did earlier, after promoting this, we now have access to this variable. We can pull off of this, we get the timer ref and find out if it is valid. So we'll do an is valid check. We're going to do that from the focus timer node being set. And if this isn't valid, so if we haven't already created a timer, that's the only time that we want to spawn a new one into the world. The location of this is going to be from the impact point, so where we've started looking. And that is pretty much the spawn logic set. And then we also want to come and handle what happens when we stop looking at this or if we've not found anything at all. So again, we'll get rid of this comment. And quite simply, all we want to do is we're going to get our is valid again. So we'll paste this back in over here. So we'll do our is valid check. And this is going to be the other way around. Uh, if this is valid, then what we want to do is to destroy the timer reference or the timer object. So we'll do a destroy actor call and we'll do this from the is valid check. Okay, so this just means that we're always taking care of this. If we ever stop looking at an interactive object, then we're going to destroy this. If we look at the sky or something, then we'll make sure that this doesn't exist, which is going to allow us to then recreate a new one later. Now the final thing, and this is going to be important, is we now need to do something in the interact function. So if we go back to our interact function, we also want our is valid check in here for the timer ref. So after we've interacted with something, we're going to want to get rid of this widget. Otherwise, it's just going to stay around hanging above the object. So again, if this is still valid, then we want to destroy actor again. Again, just another tidy up thing where you don't want the old timer just floating above the object you've just interacted with. So we'll get rid of that as well. So with all of that done, we should now be able to hit play. We'll come in and I'll start with the object over here if I can find it. And uh, if you're watching along, you probably noticed this. I plugged that into the spawn tran uh, transform scale. So it's always spawning at the middle of the map, but just very, very large, or depending on what you're looking at at least. So we'll come back in. We'll make sure we put this into the spawn transform location and we will try this again. So I'm just going to close these tabs, hit play, 
And now if we come in and we look at this, it's still a little bit big, we could probably scale that down. But we now have the timer appearing over the objects that we're looking at. So you also want to come in and maybe give this an offset. So maybe always put it just above the object. So when you're spawning this, you might want to give it a vector offset. So the location plus 50 or something on the z-axis, just to account for that spawning inside of the object that you're looking at. Uh, but I think that gives us a nice simple implementation of the timer there. In fact, I'll do that quickly. And the other thing I'm noticing is it's a little bit big. So we can come in to our BP timer. Yep. And we can just change the scale of this a bit. So maybe about a half the size. And of course you can do this in the widget as well, depending on how you want to set this up. Uh, we could have came in and made the bounds of this a little bit smaller. Uh, I'm just going to do it from here. And then inside of this, I'm going to get the impact point and I'm going to add a vector to this. So vector plus vector. We'll plug this result into the end, which I'm just going to use the reroute node over here to try and keep this a little bit tidier. This is getting a little bit uh, packed now. And I'm going to leave this where it is, but maybe we'll try to start with something like 100 on the z-axis so that regardless of what you're looking at, it shouldn't be quite inside of the object. It'll just be above it. So that might be a little bit too high, as I said, something you can play about with. But you can see now that it's not inside. It's quite nice. And uh, it's especially this one, which is higher than us. You can see it's actually rotating to look down at the player. So we can always see this and always see the fill bar uh, regardless of where we spawn this. And of course, like I mentioned as well, all of this is quite universal. Now, the way that we've set this up, if we make this a, uh, say, like a 10 second timer, so something really long, we'll see that this actually loads a lot slower and the progress bar will fill accordingly. So that's all working nicely. We don't need to worry about setting that up independently. So we can leave that at one second, uh, maybe lower that by about half. So we'll put that about 50 units down. Um, and I completely forgot that um, that wasn't going to work. So we can leave the scale here at one on all of the axes there, because when we spawn this in, we're spawning in the transform at one anyway. So it will actually be easier. Maybe we'll half this. So we'll make the size on the X axis 110 instead, so that the actual widget is smaller. And there we go, that's a little bit better. Uh, and again, you can come in, you can play about this and see how it works inside of VR and make the tweaks which are relevant to the platform that you're working with. So all of that's done. That is pretty much all of our view based stuff ready to go. In the next videos I've got planned, we're going to be looking at things like adding the motion controllers and getting some basic interaction and teleportation going on with controllers. So we're going to be moving on from devices which may not have that capability and fleshing the project out a little bit more. So as always, if you've enjoyed the video though, or find this useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. If you wanted to be kept up to date with all of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.